Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, it's Lucid. We're hopping back into our game Disciples of YouTube, where I'm playing Bandar Log with my partner, The Last Pretender, playing Marignan. So, uh, yeah, it's turn 27, and the war is not necessarily going well, judging by this. We're getting attacked a lot. So, uh, it looks like I got attacked four, five, okay, four, to four times. My partner got attacked uh, two, four, five times. Uh, and I attacked once, and my partner attacked once. So, yeah, so if we look at this, Micklin attacked me here, and he won, though he lost a couple of his Eagle Warriors. Um, uh, Marignan moved his Doomstack here and took out one PD, so that's not very efficient. Then uh, I got attacked here, and I lost. This is about 10 PD. So that's annoying. Uh, I got attacked here, and I managed to kill the uh, attackers. This is, I think, I think that is one of the mercenaries. Uh, yeah, I think so. And then this is uh, me getting, or yeah, me getting attacked by some of Nazca's raiders, and I killed them. So right now we've killed two for two out of the, or well, two for three out of the raiders. And or no, we're two for four. So we're, we killed two of the raiders and we lost two provinces. Uh, and then we retook one with, uh, with this. It was just one PD. So uh, that's okay. That's, I'm fine with that. Uh, Marignan, however, right, he attacked this. He took it with his doom stack. He got attacked here. He lost that. He got attacked here, and he lost this. Did I do both those already? I guess they were both Barbarian PD. Lost both those. Um, lost this. Lost this. So he's just getting raped on raiding, which is not cool, because I was kind of telling him it's tricky. I mean, it's not easy. He's got a harder challenge than I do, but... Um, He's also making himself an easy target, so we might lose because of this, but uh, let's go talk about that, because this is the real problem. If we look at the score graph, I was talking about this last episode, right? You can see him just going down, and this is really him. I think this is his first big play-by-email game in with probably good players. So, um, yeah, this this is really... It's two things. One is we're fighting kind of this... Cancerous Nazca, which is really hard to fight against. It's one of the hardest things to fight against. Uh, and he's taking the brunt of it, for sure. Way harder than me. Uh, but he's not necessarily countering it quite right. Part of it was and I, how we built uh, early forts out here. Like that probably wasn't totally right, especially building this one. He couldn't defend. But yeah, anyway, that's way in the past. The, the real problem, what's happening now, is he's He's deathballing because he's worried about losing um, his big force. And he's deathballing too hard. Like, I sent him a message into last game, but he didn't get it in time to change his turn. Like, he had his army here, and I was like, hey, he's going to raid you with small shit. You have to, like, defend the provinces you're leaving with small shit um, so that he can't keep doing this. And then you have to retake some of this stuff. Like, you have to fracture this army and take some of this stuff back and then pull it back together. Right now, he's too predictable, right? He's always going to death ball, and that's so easy to play around. So uh, he has to become less predictable and do some raiding. Like, take he, like this is good land. We want this. This is stuff he can defend. It's easy map move. He can have map move two through a lot of it. Um, so we need to keep this. So losing this was a big problem. So he's got to, and I think he's going to do it this turn. He's got to, like, come out and take some of this. The problem is we don't know where this army is going to go. Like, he could move everybody here and trap him, which would be kind of tough, but um, that is the price you play, you pay uh, when you're fighting raiding. Like, if you choose to only death ball, you're going to lose for sure, right? Because he's just going to take everything from you. If he takes a small group out and raids this back and raids this, then, you know, okay, they might die because he may move a big contingent here to defend or he may do a PD dump, but you have to. Otherwise, you're not, you're just going to lose by numbers. 
Likewise, we can anticipate he's going to raid. Like, okay, where is this group? He's probably going to raid this, right? This, or maybe not. Maybe he won't. Maybe he'll come down and raid that. That's actually probably this army's probably going to come down here, right? So you could potentially PD dump if you could protect against these guys, which you probably can do. You just have to calculate where the PD is going to be. Like you put him at the front of the formation with the scout. I might actually should message him that. Uh, I will do that after this turn. Um, you can use the scout actually to keep a tiny bit of like a commander on the field so the army doesn't auto route. You put the scout in the right spot. And if the scout doesn't die, I think the PD will still fight. And they can probably kill these flyers with about 20 PD. So that would be really good. Get this PD off the map. Um, we need that. He needs to take this back. He needs to like fight and take all this shit back. Um, Nazca also moved a huge army on top of here. Uh, he didn't crack it, and because he didn't crack it, I do not think he's going to try to storm it. So he's probably going to move this somewhere else. Uh, in fact, he, I don't think he'll move it here. I think he's going to move it to attack me. I was defending this turn a bunch of provinces with mages, and he didn't move. So um, I highly expect he's going to move off here this turn. So he has to keep this army within one turn in case he does sit on it, so he can move them off next turn. And he probably needs to break the siege, expecting these guys are going to move off with like a small little force that could die. Um, but yeah, I think he's probably going to move here with this big force. And then I don't know where this one's going to go. This one might move here to like cut off his retreat. Could also be he says, hey, actually, I want to have a battle. I'm going to keep my army here, expecting you to move on it. And I'm going to move this here to cut off your only retreat. Uh, I don't think he'll do that, but you don't know. Um, so Marignan's uh, definitely losing pretty hard right now. This is really, really bad for us. His uh, income is probably so low, he barely has any more gold to spend. He did get Blade Winds up, which is going to allow him to fight much more efficiently, but right now he's just losing on the strategic map. So this is my biggest concern for us right now as a team, is the fact that we're desperately losing over here. Um, my other concern is uh, there's 180 Condors here, and there's... 120 here and 30 here. That is a ton of sacreds for like where we are. We're on turn 27, right? And there's several armies of hundreds of sacreds this early in the game that are flying, by the way. Uh, this just goes to show how strong this particular build is on this nation where you take uh, an awake air god on your pretender, uh, which by the way, this you can do in without having, like this guy is the pretender. So... Uh, you can do this uh, any which way. Um, okay, so... Or you can do this in a, in a normal non-disciples game. It's not some weird combo you can't do. Like, you can't get this particular bless on Bandar in a single-player game because it relies on taking advantage of Marignan's Pretender. But... Um, yeah. So anyway, this is just so strong. Now, uh, I need... We have, there's a game we're playing, and the game is called Kill These Freaking Raiders. Um, Micklin did not attack me. If you recall last episode, he had a huge army here. I was expecting him to attack me. He didn't, which is unfortunate because I wasted a shit ton of PD over here. Um, and I hate doing PD. I do not normally do a lot of PD, and I'm doing tons of PD this game. And PD is kind of a losing strategy. So I want to get out of that business. Um... I think I've gotten out of it. I don't think I dropped too much. Oh, no, I did. I did a lot of PD here. So here's what I was thinking. This army here could move up this way. If it does, I probably I don't need all that PD. I probably need some of it, though. I think 15 will be enough. So that if he moves up, I think if he moves, if he doesn't move up, I think we're going to go ahead and attack. If he moves towards me, we'll have a fight. It'll be in my province. If he doesn't, uh, we'll fight here. I don't think he'll patrol here. I don't think he'll, like, do a PD dump and stay. I think that would be very unlike him. So I think we're going to move here and try to retake this. it has got a good bit of income. Uh, we're sight searching here, and we're going to retreat. In case he attacks us, we're not going to be able to keep it. Um, highly likely he raids here. I don't really have a good way to get to it. And I kind of, since I already did a PD dump here, I don't really want to lose all my PD. And I'm kind of hoping he thinks I'm going to raid out of it and will come attack me. Uh, maybe he thinks I'm not going to just sit here. 
And then if I sit here another turn, then I'll probably move so that I'm less predictable next turn. Um, this little Nazca squad came up this way. He could come up here, but he won't. I have a ton of PD. He could come here. That's actually more likely. Uh, so I'm probably going to move like a little anti-raiding squad down here that I can then trace up and follow him through. Um, my scout here is doing what I was saying he should do. Uh, I've got a lot of PD in this province, like a shit ton. And this scout is going to be forward positioned where hopefully by the time the birds fly in, he'll be in the midst of all of them. And uh, the commanders, unfortunately, will be at the back. The commanders will be back here. So if the birds do attack rear, they'll hit the commanders. The army will route unless I think I have my scout. Uh, I think that's how it works. I actually probably should test that in the test game. But uh, yeah, I think that's how it works. And hopefully that will keep these guys from routing if indeed he does jump forward here and try to take this. I don't think he will. He's probably like, I don't really care about this province, not for that much money. Um, yeah, so I think he's not going to attack here, but we've got my scout there just in case. Uh, we're going to move uh, to take this. If Now, he could bait me here, right? He could have a ton of PD, and he could move his full army back in. I think with this army of Satis here, it's pretty unlikely. He's probably going to pull this force back to try to fight Satis. Uh, and I think Satis might actually beat him, and if he does, that's going to be really good news for us. Um, yeah. So, uh, the main thing is we've got huge stacks of Flying Sacreds here and here. We don't know where they're going to go. Uh, my partner needs to take a lot of provinces back, and then he also needs to force a, ba a battle and catch raiders. The thing is, Nazca's taken so much from him now, it's going to be very difficult for Nazca to raid much more without running into one of his stacks. Like, so Nazca's probably going to transition into my territory. So, uh, let's talk about that real quick. Uh, I got my god, I've switched to summoning Ganas, which are very cheap. I get uh, 20 of them for 12 gems in their ethereal, so they're extremely cheap uh, chaff against these guys. Um, I forget how ethereal interacts with shock weapons. I don't I don't think shock gets, the, the thunder weapons gets to strike if the main attack misses ethereal, but I could be wrong. I know it doesn't total. it's not the same as magic weapons, it's not going to like negate my ethereal-ness altogether. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, he's going to be summoning Ganas. We're going to be patrolling here with these guys. Uh, and we've got a good amount of PD. So, uh, and with these guys, sorry. So we've got a big army here patrolling with a lot of PD. This guy, whoops, I didn't script him. He's going to be set to swarming. Um, yeah, and we're going back to some research. I got to get some research in. If I have all my guys patrolling all the time, I'm never going to get anything researched. So we're patrolling here. Um, hopefully getting all these Ganas out will allow me to uh, better defend my territory because I need a lot of chaff to absorb uh, these kind of cancer weapons that they're, they're bringing. So, yeah, I'm not, and I'll be less reliant on Swarm to absorb all the hits. Ganas is really going to, I think help a lot, and I've got a lot of death gems I can spend, so we're going to basically do that. I'm Actually, I probably should run up. I've switched my research up. I hit Alt-5, so I can start doing Wooden Warriors, though I don't have it queued up in any of my battles yet, uh, though it would potentially be a good thing to do. It's not going to be as helpful versus Nazca, because I think in general, if they hit me, I'm dead. <laughs> uh, things like luck are going to be, I think, a much bigger value. I'm going to run up Conjuration 4 for a few reasons. One, is I may want to get um, Vetlas. They're at Conjuration 5, so I don't know if I'll get there in time. Uh, but they're probably a little more efficient because they have two forms. They're probably a little better than Ghana's, but maybe not. Um, the other thing is I get... I need to start getting some of my, my summons, like my Earth Summons, the Yakasha. I really need that. Um, so I want to go ahead and get the Conjuration 4. And then Enchantment 3 is going to give me Revenants, which I can then make a Skull Staff. Once I have construction four, and also I think this is, yeah, this is death one. So I can make a revenant and they can be in charge of Ghana's and then I can get my god to stop doing it, which would be nice. Be really nice. Um, here, what are we doing? We've got all of these guys patrolling. So we've got a bunch of swarms coming out in conjunction with 41 PD. So if he attacks me here, which I think is pretty likely, we will kill him. Uh, if he attacks me here... Uh, not as much, so this could, he could do a coordinated attack where he brings all these guys here and he brings these guys. And he might think, oh, I can probably take it with 
180, he might be feeling pretty cocky. And he might be able to take it, but he would probably take a lot of losses. So, I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, trying to think what else. Basically, uh, I think what's going to win it for us is if Satis gets a break, uh, Pan is attacking here. If Pan can keep pushing him back some and, like, take a fort or two. Uh, and if we start getting him pushed back a fair amount, we'll... I think we'll be able to kind of hang in there. Um, but if not, we're going to be in a good bit of trouble. So, uh, I don't know where Marignan's going to move. If I were Marignan, I think this army's potentially... I don't think it's going to move here. He doesn't want to fight. His army's definitely going to come off the fort. Um... Yeah, and I think I would, if I were Marignan, I would split up. I would try to take, like, all three of these provinces and assume he was going to attack me. And then I would probably move my death ball to this one. While having smaller factions split off and take each of these ones. And then I would move this one probably down here while having smaller factions split off and take these. Uh, with the intention of coming down and taking this fort. So that's probably what I would do. Um... But we'll see. I'll probably communicate that to him in some way. Uh, but he's going to be... I mean, he's playing his own nation. I'm kind of giving him some tips. The The big thing I've told him is there's some math you have to do when you're fighting flying nations. And the math is this. It's how many provinces are they taking per turn versus how many are you retaking? That is the primary thing which is going to drive this graph. And as you can see, it's just, it's been going down at a pretty steady rate. And it's because he's been like retaking one and they've been taking three. Um, the other thing that's a big variable in that is how many raiding parties can you kill? And right now he's not doing a great job predicting raiding part or whether he's going to get raided. So uh, he has to do two things. He has to one, increase the number of provinces that he takes back. He's deathballing too hard um, because he doesn't want to lose his forces. And I think he has to give up on that a little bit. He needs to keep a few death balls so he can protect his forts, but uh, he can't death ball quite this hard or I think he will lose. So anyway, uh, we're a little bit on a knife's edge here because one, if he loses one of these battles really badly, it's going to be over. But And he can't split up his armies too much, but he has to split it up enough to take some of these provinces back. And I don't think Nazca can go underwater quite yet. Yet, yeah, none of these guys... Let's just check their items, make sure they don't have... Rings of water breathing or something, because that would really wreck my day. Because I am definitely enjoying income from those lakes. Can this one... Oh, this one's starved. I can't even get this. He needs to get this province back so that I'm losing income from that. So I'll probably tell him that too. Um, hard to guess. You know, this army could just come down and lock down his cap too. Going to be really hard to predict. Um... In fact, it may be good just to keep his death ball here. Because he potentially... If he has flyers, I don't know how many he has here. He could move them on top of the cap, move these guys and these guys on top of the cap. And these guys, like, he could move everybody on top of the cap. And that might... I, that's not how Nazca is playing, though. But he could. You can see he did bring a lot of guys here. Um, yeah. If we look at it, let's actually count from the Snowford battle. 107? Yeah. And this fort... Like, can I not see how... the wall integrity? Oh, I guess you can't as an ally. Uh, anyway, it's not fully cracked, so I think we're in good shape. I guess that's his scout there in his own province. Weird. Um, now, if he moves the death squad up here, um, like all hundred of them, I don't know if we're going to make it. Well, let's think about it. So if he... This group can't move up here, but it can move here. This group can move up here, but that group can move here too. So I've got... This is kind of my variable, these guys. Where do I want them to go? I think I actually might need to move them here. He could move all of these guys on top of this. We'll be in deep shit if that happens.
It's kind of like more than I can defend. I got to do recruitment too. I think this one is in the biggest jeopardy of getting hit by like a big meatball of stuff. I th think we would win it with this. But then if he comes and hits me hard here with everything, uh, and all I've got, I don't have anybody patrolling. I would lose 30 PD and they would just like auto die. But then I would have my army over here, my god inside. That's not really a great position to be in. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to... PD is kind of a losing thing because you end up... The problem with PD is you end up wanting to protect it once you get it. Like here, I don't want to give this up. So I'd be moving this army around a lot more except I want to protect my PD. Um, the same thing here. Like I, I don't really care if he moved an army on... Like if he spent 160 guys and moved them on top of my fort in one turn... Not the end of the world, except um, except I don't want to lose twenty five or the thirty PD I have invested here. So what I might should do I might have this one guy patrol and just put him far forward. And that might help the PD not die. I think we'll do that. They're still going to get raped by 180. That's just so many. So many. It's really hard to... It, the problem is that with flyers, you cannot predict their movement very well. Uh, in my opinion, I love ganging up on flyers. They're such a cancerous nation to play... Like, any flying nation is so hard to play against uh, in a fair fight. It's just so hard. Uh, you have to have a very efficient way of defending your provinces... Like, oftentimes thugs are the best way to do it, because, like, if you're playing versus Kalem, they have a ton of flyers which are really good against PD, but they can't usually kill thugs very well, or things with really high protection, or, like, you put a vine shield on, on them, and all of a sudden they can't kill them. That is not the case with this Cancer Bless. Like, they would wreck thugs. Um, assassins are a pretty good counter to them, but, yeah, it's going to be ugly. Um, so, yeah, we're defending this. I don't know if we quite... I don't think we have enough here if he does attack with everyone. In fact, I'm quite sure we don't. Maybe I just call this one a loss and move everybody back. And just say, hey, I'm going to lose all this PD. And I combine these armies. The problem is how much... What, 80 supply? 219? 219. We're already starving a little bit. I don't know if I want to combine them. We'll be starving there again. I don't really want to combine them. So far, Nazca hasn't been deathballing that much. And I don't think he... If he wants to fight me, I think we just say, come on and bring it. Highly likely he moves here. Yeah, I don't know. He can pick me apart. We've got to... we got to get lucky. We're in, a, we're in a losing fight right now. If... Yeah. I mean, we've killed some of his raiders this turn. I don't think we've killed enough. Here we're side searching and we've got this guy on retreat with his squad on retreat. Um, we're going to kind of push back here against Micklin. Uh, we're not taking these barbs back yet. I would like to, but uh, I'm more worried about... Wait, why are these guys patrolling? Probably need to send these guys... Yeah, here... Okay, can we get attacked? Why are we patrolling? Okay, these guys could attack us, but I don't think it's very likely. And this is a kind of weak squad. I think I can kind of get by with having... I do not need all these guys. So actually, we may be able to cordon off a little group. Yeah, I think we're going to get these guys, and we're going to go... Attack here. It's only 30 barbs, right? Old lands. Yeah, we can probably kill them. Um, I don't, I think we can actually have these guys research. Uh, if we can make, you know, I kind of want to make, I think I'm going to make one of uh, the sorceresses. She can then forge uh, a bow and we can do uh, acorns and a bow and we can give that to Micklin, I mean to uh, Marignan who can make 
uh, little assassins with those. And I think we're going to do that. Here, we're going to, we need more. I think we're going to do this and white ones. We're getting close to year three where these guys are going to become a lot better. And by close, I mean we're still kind of far away. Okay, we're getting some mage production at least. Uh, though most of our mages are doing things other than researching. So this guy is patrolling here. Which will probably just make it so our PD doesn't auto-die. Uh, though he's probably going to die in a fight. Then we're patrolling here, which is where I think we will get hit hardest. And we've got a big army coming in. With a lot of swarm casting. And then a fair amount of luck casting, etc. Uh, I want to go ahead, I need to upgrade this fort and put a lab and stuff in it. I just don't have the money to do it now. Um, also possible we get hit here. If we get here, it would probably be by these guys, and I probably should up PD a bit more. Because with a bit of PD and this guy spamming out Swarm, it's possible we kill these guys if they raid me here. Possible. I don't know if it's likely, but it's possible. And I'll take that. Um, you know, I'm actually thinking about it. I think the bugs will fly over there, so I think we're going to do... Like that. Ah... <sighs> So this is going to be pretty dicey, pretty damn dicey. I also have my guy where if I want to, I can set him to wind guide, which would be nice. It would make my PD a lot better. Uh, but I need to get Ghanas out. Uh, I, I need that ethereal chaff really bad. So I don't know. We're rolling the dice. We're, we're fighting a losing war right now. I'm sure Nazca's feeling pretty comfortable. Um, he's just got to keep doing what he's doing. But all we, all it's going to take is we need to win one or two. We need to win a big battle versus each Nazca and uh, Miklin. And it, it needs to be any one of the four people fighting them. Uh, and once we get their troop numbers down, um, there's a lot of things that happens. Once we don't have to worry about... The reason Marignan is deathballing is because he's worried about getting hit by like a 200 stack. The second we win a big battle and, and Nazca can't really do a 200 stack anymore, then we're going to be able to counter raid much more efficiently so just being able to have the threat of having a hundred sapayish you know condors and condor warriors show up uh, to a fight means you're very hesitant about moving 40 dudes around which means that if we're if we're hesitant about moving 40 guys around uh he can get away with moving 30 guys around to do his raiding uh, because they'll kill small raiding squads that we do so anyway we have to win a couple big battles but nazca right now is trying to avoid that um and we just have to kind of get lucky. I've got enough PD and enough places and enough armies and enough mages where I can kind of do it, but I, I'm compromising everything else. I don't have a great income right now, and I definitely am not getting a lot of research done. I'm like a like hundred research, which is nothing. Um, and we definitely, once we get up to alteration eight, that's kind of going to be almost a win condition for us because Will of Fates is so good. Um, yeah, and the natural protection will be good too. So once we do that, we can probably doom stack, but we're not there yet. Anyway, this is a dicey freaking game. Dicey game. Um, so anyway, I hope you're enjoying it at least. Uh, and I hope this gives you a good sense of some of the flying nation uh, dynamics, because we are definitely struggling versus it right now. So thank you all for watching. See you next time.